Hello, welcome to Stackable, the all-in-one solution to building stunning websites with the WordPress block editor. In this video, we will be teaching you how to build your website from scratch using Stackable blocks. For purposes of this tutorial, let's create a website for a company that offers a project management solution. You will need a WordPress account and of course, the Stackable plugin. Let's first select our theme. From a WordPress dashboard, click on Appearance on the left menu panel. By default, the 2021 theme is selected for new accounts. Let's use Boxy as it's very customizable and works well with the Stackable plugin. Once it's been activated, click Customize and you will be directed to the theme customizer. Now let's set the color palette which will be carried over to the stackable blocks. On the left menu panel, click Colors. Bloxy has suggested color palettes, but you may change these colors by clicking on any palette. There is a color picker for you to change the colors to your preference, but if you already have hexadecimal codes from when you were planning your design, you may input it in the hex code text field like what we're doing. The color scheme we're going with for this website is centered around blue and dark gray tones. Now that we've set up the color palette, click publish on the top right corner of the menu panel. That should save the settings that we've set. Before we begin building our first page, let's first familiarize ourselves with the WordPress block editor and the stackable editing interface. To open the WordPress block editor, click pages from the left menu panel, then click add new beside the pages heading. The rightmost panel is called the inspector. This is where you can access various settings for plugins like Stackable or Bloxy. The bar on the top is the toolbar. Clicking the plus button beside the WordPress icon opens the block menu. Here, you'll be able to view the various blocks you can use for your website. It is grouped by block category, but you can also find all Stackable blocks grouped together by scrolling all the way down. Clicking a block will add it to your page. You can also click the plus button within the line of text to add a block. Now let's explore the toolbar. The pencil icon next to the plus button on the toolbar lets you select the cursor mode. There are two modes you can choose from, the editing mode and the selector mode. The left arrow is the undo button. The right arrow is the redo button. The information icon next to it gives you a summary of information about your page. The icon with the three lines is the outline. Click on any of the listed blocks to select it. Lastly, the stackable design library opens the library of stackable's pre-designed blocks. You may view it according to UI kit or by block designs. On the right side of the toolbar is a Save button, where we can save any changes we've made as a draft. The Preview button lets us view the page in different modes, Desktop, Tablet, or Mobile. Clicking Preview in a new tab will let us have a live view of the page we're editing. The Publish button will make the page live. Before publishing the page, we are given some customizable settings such as visibility and time of publishing. The visibility accordion lets us choose to whom the page will be visible, while the publish accordion lets us either publish the page immediately or schedule it to a later time. Let's leave these settings as it is and go back to the editor. The cog icon is the inspector where we can edit the settings for the page and the block that is currently selected. 
Here you can see the various editing options available for stackable blocks. The layout tab is where you can change the layout of the selected block. If you scroll down, you will also see some of the pre-designed options for that block. The style tab is where you can customize the different elements within a block. The advanced tab is where you can find some advanced editing for that block. The stackable icon on the toolbar is where you can adjust the global settings. The global color palette is where you can see the color palette you've chosen from the theme customizer. You can toggle this off and set different colors within the stackable editor. The global typography accordion is where you can change typography styles. In the apply typography styles to drop down menu, you can choose whether the typography styles will be applicable to stackable and native blocks only, stackable blocks only, or stackable and all other blocks only. You can change the typography styles for each text format by clicking the pencil icon next to it. The block C icon next to the stackable icon lets you customize the settings for the block C theme. Lastly, the kebab menu, also known as the three dots menu, is where you could alter the Gutenberg and stackable interface settings. You could change where your toolbar is displayed, view the interface visually or through the code editor, and access other editor tools. Now, let's design the home page. We've named this page Home. Let's add a feature block. Change the block's alignment to a wider setting. Input our title and add a highlight by changing the color of our keyword. Change the HTML tag of the title to H1 and adjust the letter spacing and line height. Let's change the color of our button and add a hover effect. We'll use lift. Now let's see if it works. Cool! Let's also add a color change on hover for the button for better animation. Let's add our button text. And finally, our image asset to complete the block. To make this block look better, let's add a block background. Let's see how our website is looking in a live preview. Looking great! We should add some spacing in between the block's elements for better readability. Don't forget to hit save every so often to save your work. Next, let's add a feature grid block. Let's adjust the width of this block to a wider setting and use the plane layout in the layout tab in the inspector. Change the block's alignment to left align and toggle on the title for this block. Now let's add the content and assets to this block. Toggle off the buttons for this block since we're not going to be needing it. And let's move on. This one will be the pricing block. Set the alignment to left align like the previous block and add one more column. Adjust the width to wide and toggle the image boxes off. Now let's adjust the border settings for each container. Let's add in our content and adjust the font styling of our subtitle. Adjust the settings for our buttons and add the button text. We should put a title to this block to separate it from the previous block and center align it. Let's fix the gap between the columns in the Advanced tab. Hit Save just to make sure progress doesn't get lost. Next, let's add a Frequently Asked Question section for our website visitors to refer to. Add a container block, change its width to the wide setting, and keep the default settings. Inside the container block, add an advanced heading block by clicking the plus button within it and toggle the subtitle off. Let's type in our title and adjust its font styling. Still within the container block, let's add an accordion block 
and choose the appropriate layout. Let's adjust the font styling for the accordion block and change the styling of the arrow. Now let's simply add more accordion blocks by pressing the kebab menu in the toolbar and selecting duplicate. Lastly, change the content for each accordion as needed. To wrap up the home page, let's add a call to action block. Customize this block's container background color to make it stand out and pattern the button from the previous buttons. Let's add the content such as the header, the description, and the button text. Let's save the progress we've made. Since we're done with the home page, let's publish this and view it live. Let's test whether the accordion blocks are working properly. Great! Now we've got the home page set up. Now that we've finished designing the home page, we'll need to set it as a front page of our site. Navigate to pages in the dashboard and then select all pages. You will find the home page there. Hover over the settings options in the dashboard and then select reading. The reading settings will open up and you can adjust accordingly. For this, select a static page and then home in the home page dropdown. Save your changes and go back to all your pages. You will see that it's been set to front page. Now that that's done, let's work on the next page for our website, the About page. Once you add a new page, a blank one will open up. The process of adding and customizing your blocks will be the same as what you did for the home page. First, add a feature block, set it to white width, and then select a layout. Navigate to the Style tab in the Inspector and adjust the container settings accordingly. Here, we are adjusting the border, adding a photo, and then changing the text. We will be removing the button since we won't be needing it for now. Click Save to save our changes. Now let's add a count up block. This is a great block to showcase any achievements and or pricing. Go to the Style tab and add two more columns and customize it. Let's change the block background to a blue shade and toggle the title off. Now let's customize the typography settings for the count up block. Finally, let's add our content. Change the font styling, and that's done. That looks good! This time, let's add a team member block. Let's set it to the plain layout, and then add an extra column. Let's add a block title, and type in the title of this section. Turn on the block background, and add the photos of our team members. Don't forget to plug in the names of your team. Here, you can customize the image shape you want. If you're a premium user, you'll have more options to choose from. For this one, let's choose the default shape for now. Feel free to adjust the image size and make necessary adjustments. Let's remove the description and then fill up the position. All right. Now for the next part, you can toggle on or off the display for the social buttons. You have the option to choose the default social colors or use your own. Now the team member section is done. Next, we'll add the testimonial block which will allow us to showcase what people say about our product or business. Let's customize it. Add an extra column and some images. Customize the typography and fill in the information. Okay, looks good. Let's add a block title and label it Testimonials. Let's publish this and view the page. 
This is how the about page is looking like. It's a very clean and cohesive design. But looking at it, it needs a little bit of adjustment. Let's add a space in between these two blocks. Update. Then let's have a look at it again. Now our website is coming along very well. Now that we're done designing the about page, it's time to work on the menu and footer of the site. Back at the dashboard, hover over the appearance tab and then select menus. You will see this page once the menu settings open. Fill in the menu name you want. Let's put primary header, then click create menu. On the left side, we can add our menu items. Let's add both the home page and the about page to our menu. Put the home page first, since it's our front page, and then save menu. Now click on customize in the dashboard. This is where we can customize the fonts, colors, and other settings of the menu. Go to header, then upload your logo. You can adjust the size here, and you can turn off the display of your site title so that it will only show your logo. You can adjust the size of the logo depending on what device the website will be viewed from. Let's make it smaller for the tablet and mobile versions. Now we can customize the menu that we set earlier on. These are the settings that you can play around with. Here, you can see how it'll appear on your tablet or mobile devices. I want to add a button to our menu, so I'll just drag it down here. See it appear right after. Adjust it accordingly. Alright, that looks great. Now let's work on the footer. You can add more widgets if you want to, but for this one, we'll stick to just one with the copyright claim. Let's select it and then customize it accordingly. Let's change the row color and then the font color so that it's readable. Looks good across other devices too. Okay, then click Publish. Let's go back to our pages. Let's see how our website looks like with a menu. And you can see the menu with the newly added button and logo over here. Let's scroll down to see the footer. There it is. Now, let's check how the site looks across all screens. Let's start with the tablet view. Each block has its own responsive settings, where you can edit the way you want it to show on different devices. The nice thing about this is, if we change anything here, it won't change the settings on desktop or mobile view. Let's update this, then check it out on mobile view. Let's make the necessary adjustments. Alright, done. Then update the page again. We're finally done designing our website. Let's have a look at the website we just created. Here is our homepage. It contains the basic information that a website would need on the homepage. Our about page includes additional information that a website visitor might be curious about. And there we have it. We were able to build a fully functional website. Not only that, it looks professionally designed too. We hope that after this video, you feel equipped with enough knowledge about Stackable and the WordPress block editor to start building your own website. We are so excited to see what you can do with Stackable. The possibilities are endless. This was our video on how to create a website from scratch with Stackable. Thanks for watching.